Hello, I'm psychology professor Bruce Heinrichs. In this video, I'm going to describe the language areas of the human brain. Language means the use of words and rules or grammar. So some animals, of course, can use sounds to communicate, but that's not exactly grammar. Humans are the ones that really use grammar and to communicate meaning. And we do this through our speaking and listening, through our writing and reading, and also through sign language. Here are a couple of funny cartoons that remind us that language is made up of words and rules or grammar. So on the left, we have the older people saying, I don't understand a word young people say these days, but of course, <laughs> the young people are speaking in text talk. See you, I'll text you later. Uh, anyway, um, on the right, we have the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. Oh, for crying out loud, he says, you never end a sentence with a bird symbol. That's the ancient grammar police. So languages, words, and rules. There are two primary language areas in the human brain. One is called Broca's area, which is named after a French scientist, uh, Pierre Paul Broca. And the second is called Wernicke's area. It's pronounced Wernicke because it's a German name. It was discovered by Carl Wernicke, German scientist. Broca's area is located in the lower frontal lobe and Wernicke's area is located in the upper back part of the temporal lobe. Here we see the location of Broca's area in the frontal lobe and Wernicke's area in the upper back part of the temporal lobe. Both of these areas are usually on the left side. About 95% of people have them in the left hemisphere, but a few people have them in the right hemisphere as is shown in Wernicke's area that sometimes it's on the right side. Broca's area and Wernicke's area communicate with each other, but not on the surface of the cortex, but rather underneath within the cerebrum. There's a bundle of fibers that connect these two areas called the arcuate fasciculus. And here we see an illustration of Broca's area, Wernicke's area, and the purple strip indicates the arcuate fasciculus, which is located underneath the cerebral cortex. Both of these language areas are rather complicated. However, the simplest way to think of them is that Broca's area in the front of the brain is more involved in producing language. And in fact, it is close to the motor cortex, the part of the brain that helps us control our movement of our muscles like when we speak. Wernicke's area is located near the auditory cortex and also not too far from the visual cortex of the brain. So we'd like to think of Wernicke's area more as a reception area, uh, an area of the brain that is more for understanding speech, whereas Broca's area is more for the production of speech. And this illustration shows the location of these two language areas, Broca's area in the frontal lobe, which is close to the motor cortex, and Wernicke's area in the upper back temporal lobe, close to both the visual cortex and the auditory area. So we think of Broca's area in the front as more uh, related to producing language, like when you write or when you speak, and Wernicke's area more related to hearing language or reading, seeing language. And once again, we see the location of Broca's area and Wernicke's area, usually on the left hemisphere, and how they're related to other parts of the brain. PET scan is a technique that shows brain activity while a person is doing something. In this case, we have four PET scans. On the upper left, a PET scan of a person who's just looking at words. And then the upper right, a person who's listening to words. So you see the activity in the temporal lobe, the auditory processing area, as compared to the first picture, which shows activity in the visual area. And then the lower left, we have a person speaking words. So there's activity in the motor cortex 
and then the lower right, a person who's generating verbs, they're thinking of verbs, and we see a lot of uh, activity in Broca's area. When we are reading, we of course are using the visual cortex, which is way in the lower back in the occipital lobe. And then the visual cortex sends that information into the parietal lobe, which tries to convert the visual symbols into sounds. And then the signal goes to Wernicke's area, which can understand those sounds. And then the information goes to Broca's area, which is involved in vocalization, articulation, and grammar. And then we can speak, for example, we can read out loud by sending the signal from Broca's area into the motor cortex. And here we see a very complicated version of what is going on during reading. So we have visual area involved, we have the parietal lobe involved in trying to make sense out of the changing the visual information into auditory information. Of course, Wernicke's area helping to understand the meaning and Broca's area is also involved with grammar and with articulation. Here are two more simple illustrations of what happens when you wanna speak some words that you are seeing in writing. That is, you're reading something, you see in writing some words and you wanna speak it, that's on the left. And then on the right, you hear some speech and then you wanna say it back. You wanna speak some words that you've heard that involves the temporal lobe hearing and processing the sounds, Wernicke's area, and then Broca's area, and then the motor cortex for speaking. When people have damage in the language areas of the brain, this is called aphasia. And there are several different kinds of aphasia. For example, Broca's aphasia, meaning damage in Broca's area, which is also called expressive aphasia, which means a person's going to have difficulty using grammar and doing pronunciation. There's also Wernicke's aphasia, meaning damage in Wernicke's area, which is also called receptive aphasia. This is difficulty understanding language. And then sometimes people have a massive stroke that damages the whole left hemisphere of their brain, and they have what is called global aphasia because both Broca's and Wernicke's area have been affected. Here's just a little more terminology about aphasia. Broca's aphasia is often called non-fluent aphasia because people are really struggling to get words out. They speak in very short sentences. They leave out words. Uh, with Broca's aphasia, a person might understand what other people are saying, but they have trouble speaking. So it's called non-fluent. Wernicke's aphasia, people have a, a good ability to speak, uh, and so it's called fluent aphasia, although they have trouble understanding the meaning of spoken words and sentences, and their reading and writing is often severely impaired. So Wernicke's often called fluent, uh, Broca's sometimes called non-fluent. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you learned a lot about the language areas of the brain. And please watch some more of my videos on my channel, Brucey. I have lots of good videos about psychology. See you later. Bye.